Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies. Today we're looking at this 2007 Honda Accord with a 2.4 liter engine in it. This is a K24A engine. I'm going to show you the emissions locations to help you on your DIY repair. I'm also going to give you some tips and let you know what codes or symptoms some of these components can also give you. Here is the PCV valve, positive crankcase ventilation valve. This lets blow by and fumes from the oil system uh, go back into your intake so it's burnt through the combustion chamber and out the exhaust of the catalytic converter so it gets cleaned up rather than allowing the fumes go in the atmosphere. Moving on is your mass airflow sensor. This is the sensor the computer uses to measure the air going into the engine. This can give you some weird codes such as such as P0101, P0102, P0103 and more. Here we have the EGR valve. This is your exhaust gas recirculation valve. This takes burnt gas from the exhaust system and pushes it back into the intake system so you get better efficiency and it cools down the combustion temperature so it lowers NOx. If you do have an EGR gone bad or going bad, the most common code is a P0401, but there is more. And if you do end up with a different one, please comment below with the year make model and the code to help others out. This is your emissions vapor purge solenoid. This solenoid is responsible for allowing vapors built up in the emissions system to enter into your intake system and again, burnt through the combustion process and out the tailpipe so it's not released into the atmosphere or releasing raw fuel HC into the atmosphere. Here, coming out of the engine on the exhaust manifold, you're going to find your bank one, sensor one, oxygen sensor or air fuel ratio sensor in this case. I didn't get the best shots in this video because it was a last minute thing. It was about to go and I'm like, oh my God, one more video. This is your bank one, sensor one, oxygen sensor or air fuel ratio sensor. This sensor is responsible for letting the computer know how much fuel or air is in the exhaust system. The computer will use that information and some information from the mass airflow sensor and other components to come up with the proper air fuel ratio. Your bank one sensor one is really common to go bad and is very important. If it is going bad, your most common codes are going to be a P0134, a P0135, and much more. Let me know below what your code was if you ended up having trying to shimmy under the vehicle. Probably would have been easier coming in from the passenger side. Here is your bank one sensor two oxygen sensor or air fuel ratio sensor. This sensor is used for the computer to check the catalyst efficiency. So it lets the computer know if the cat's good or not. Uh, this should not affect the air fuel ratio at all, but you'll hear like horror stories about that they do, but there's not supposed to. They should only check efficiency of the cat. Now we're under the vehicle in front of the driver rear tire. Here is your vapor canister. This holds the fumes or vapors from the EVAP system so they don't release into the atmosphere or lets them go when it is ready. Here I thought was your vapor vent solenoid on the very end. But looking more into it, this is the more efficient model. So that is why it matters is that it is a SULEV motor. Your vapor vent solenoid is actually on top of the canister. The canister has to be removed to get to it. But if you had a vent solenoid code, all of these hoses from right there where vapors leave the canister travel through the hose to the vent and then more hose past that. All those hoses should be checked if you have any type of vent code. I've seen spiders and bugs and road debris get in those hoses and just make a clog and it makes it so that the vent doesn't happen and it makes it hard to like pump gas and whatnot. So if you do have any type of vent code, uh, I would highly recommend make sure you check all the hoses that go from the canister to ambient. Uh, hopefully this video helps you out with your DIY repairs. If it does, make sure you comment below with the year, make, model, and engine size of your vehicle. Also, please tell everybody about me. Hopefully, one of these two videos right here might help you out on your repair if this one didn't. I'll see you on the next hopefully helpful video. And thanks for watching.